Well, I've always been, you know, somebody who loves nature and since I was a little kid. So I was always interested in doing something that would help the earth and help the planet. And water's always been a draw for me. It's, it's you know, the rivers and lakes, they're just beautiful and they contain, you know, extraordinarily diverse forms of life and they've just always been fascinating to me. Well, the mission of National Geographic is to inspire people to care about the planet. Our goals will focus on bringing rivers back to health and also helping people know how they can conserve water at a very individual level. We generate hydroelectricity at Hoover Dam, which is the dam that creates Lake Mead, um, which illuminates Las Vegas and provides electricity. These are big cities with huge populations that depend on, on the supply of water, as well as about a million acres of irrigated land. We have green lawns and enormous water demands that now depend on this system. What we're seeing is this, this bathtub ring indicates that the lake's been dropping and over the last decade, uh, Lake Mead, the level of Lake Mead has dropped um, a bit over 100 feet. You know, if, if the lake levels don't come back up and they continue to drop, then there's less water to, to supply to Las Vegas, to Los Angeles, to the farmers in, in Arizona and California, so everybody would feel that pain in some way. I think the situation here, you know, suggests that that we in North America have to be concerned about water too. There's just so much we can do to conserve water and, and to meet our needs. And so making agriculture more efficient is extremely important. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that there. Hi guys. <laughs> so you, you know, can I've been just setting mine. Here. Do you need a As far as conserving water, where we're having to pay for it uh, on a monthly basis, the water is a big issue for us. So we are definitely looking to conserve water as much as possible and watering directly at the plants. So th this has been left on probably for about two hours. I need to turn it off now. But uh, this tea tape that was flat now, you can see, is, is like a tube. And here's, here's an emitter. That helps considerably. <laughs> we're not sprinkling a huge, massive area. So much of the water is being taken from the farms and from the smaller communities to, to feed uh, Las Vegas. Definitely don't have a problem with everyone getting clean water to drink, but when we see these huge uh, infrastructures of need for water for, for entertainment type uh, uh, facilities where we're struggling to keep water in our community, it, it does uh, get your dander up a little bit. You know, a lot of people ask me, what can I do? I, I turn off the tap when I'm brushing my teeth. What more can I do? And there is so much more because everything that we eat throughout the day, everything we buy has water in it. A hamburger maybe has 600 gallons of water in it. A pair of jeans has maybe 2,000 gallons of water embedded in it for the cotton to produce uh, the fibers and then making the jeans in the factory. All of that adds up. And so the average American now has a water footprint of 1,800 gallons per day. An enormous amount of water. We are connected 
All the water here on Earth now is all the water there ever was and ever will be. Through the cycling of water across space and time, we are linked to all of life. And as molecules of water circulate from sea to air to land, through the clouds, through the rivers, through the trees, through the frogs and fish and mussels and beetles and ants and birds and bees and everything alive now and then and yet to be, we are connected. Deep in our bones we know this. We have just pushed that knowing out of the way. But as the unthinkable keeps happening, as water disappears from rivers and lakes and the aquifers beneath our feet, I believe we will begin to awaken to our kinship with water which springs from knowing at a cellular level that water's gift is life.